Once again, we're back on the periodic table talking about another element. This one, Bi, which stands for bismuth, a metal that could change the world in the near future. Even though bismuth looks extremely weird and unusual, but this is how it looks naturally. But when you look at it, it looks like aliens made it and brought it to Earth. It is because of the extreme colorful rainbow design of it that there's a lot of rumors about it. Like aliens brought it, or it's made in a lab, it's made by the Illuminati, stuff like that. But none of these is true. This is 100% natural and it's extremely interesting to know about. Have you ever even heard of bismuth? Because it is not that well known. It's not well known and it's not used in many places. But not paying attention to bismuth is kind of like not paying attention to silicon throughout history. Nobody really cared about silicon until the 1950s when different elements were trying to be tested for transistors and silicon became number one. Silicon was so useful for computers that they literally named the location it was founded in Silicon Valley. You could say after that silicon became very useful throughout the world, but beforehand nobody cared about it. A lot of scientists and engineers put the same logic for silicon on bismuth. You could say in the near future bismuth is going to be an extremely important element. People might think bismuth was recently discovered, but no, it has been well known for many centuries because it's found in different types of mines, like copper, lead, and tin mines to be exact. When they were mining, they would also find bismuth, but they wouldn't know what it is because it wasn't as useful as the other three metals we just mentioned, so they would just throw it away. In the year 1753, just like usual, the Europeans discovered this element and put a name on it. Nobody really knows what bismuth means, but it is an old German word with an old meaning of white. But we're not sure why the Germans named it white when the metal is naturally silver. Either way, since the 1750s, the Europeans have been messing around bismuth to figure out what they can do with it. They soon realized that it's not that useful in everyday life and other metals are much more useful so they didn't bother testing anymore and bismuth was forgotten about. The only thing they realized is that when you give it heat and naturally let it cool, it gets this rainbow color effect on top of it. When you get to the 20th century, once again different scientists all around the world started testing on bismuth. One of those companies that was testing with bismuth was a pharmaceutical company named Norwich Pharma Services and they realized that bismuth is actually useful in this type of drug. A drug that's meant for upset stomachs. The official name is bismuth subsilicylate or for short peptobismol which you probably know about. It's not a powerful drug where you need prescription. It's perfect for upset stomach and you could consider it as an anti-acid for the stomach. The amount of Pepto-Bismol you're supposed to take, it has a quarter gram of bismuth in there. So it has a lot of this heavy element in there. So finally, there was a customer for this metal. Usually you're not supposed to put heavy metals inside your body because they're most likely toxic. Bismuth is a heavy metal, but it's not toxic whatsoever. And if you look at it next to its neighbors, it's next to lead and polonium. Polonium is extremely radioactive and even though lead is used in a lot of places, it's actually very toxic. Even though bismuth is right next to them and it's a heavy metal, it's not toxic whatsoever. It only has dangerous neighbors. Nowadays there are a lot of scientists testing on different elements and one of those elements is bismuth and they want to figure out how they can use it to their advantage. Is it only good for Pepto-Bismol or is there something we're missing? They figured a lot of new things about this metal. It has a very low melting point at 270 degrees centigrade. Another thing is that it's very brittle and breaks easily. So it's not a strong metal or powerful one. 
The crystal colorful bismuth you see is when you heat it up, let it melt, and naturally let it cool slowly. And crystal crystal, it comes out looking like a rainbow. And this is unlike any other metal where it forms into the shape that it cools off in. The color you're seeing is also the metal rusting away. We slowly move forward and get to the modern era and bismuth slowly shows itself and how useful it could be. Scientists in Silicon Valley especially are trying to figure out how they can replace silicon with bismuth. They haven't been able to, but they believe it has a lot of potential. And if bismuth reaches this level, it could be very valuable, and Pepto-Bismol prices will probably rise. Let's go to another place. Do you know solar panels and what they're made with? They're either made with lead halide or cadmium telluride. These two are basically made with lead and cadmium, and the reason they use these elements is to absorb the sunlight so it can absorb its energy. But these types of metals have a lot of issues. Lead is very toxic, and cadmium is rare compared to other metals. And these two elements are the weak points of solar panels. In some sections, bismuth has replaced lead, like soldering wire, which has been lead for many decades. Or shotgun pellets that was lead for a long time, but now they're replaced with bismuth. Right now, they're basically trying to use bismuth as a replacement for lead. Lead has been used by humans for centuries, and even though it's very toxic, they still use it to this day. So that's why in a lot of places, especially third world countries, there's a lot of toxic metal everywhere that people don't know about. The worst of all is the trash that has a lot of lead in it. They put it in a landfill, and the lead leaks into the dirt, reaching groundwaters, and it also reaches drinking water where the locals are drinking lead water. But bismuth has none of these issues. They just need to figure out a way to replace lead with bismuth. Scientists in the Imperial College of London are researching bismuth heavily and they're trying to create very thin sheets of bismuth where it can be very small and use it as like a solar panel inside the house where it can absorb a very low amount of light but return a high energy. So literally, the lights inside your house could be powered by bismuth and not electricity. The scientists at Imperial College believe that it's very hard to work with bismuth itself and create something like this. But if we're able to do such thing, the payout is huge. Very high level places are testing with bismuth, so you know it's getting serious. But one important question, is there enough bismuth for all this we're talking about? No, unfortunately, it's very rare compared to other metals. Between other elements, bismuth is in 65 place in plentifulness. The most common element on earth is oxygen and second place is silicon. But you can't lose hope because you don't need a whole lot of bismuth to create solar panel style panels. So you don't need a whole lot of bismuth to create something massive unlike other metals. So the people that use Pepto-Bismol now, they have to know that in the near future, maybe that element might power the world. Thank you.